Welcome back, M Fishers. I'm Bill Jardopoulos, the host of the M Fish Fishing Vlog series. This vlog uh, is something I've had on my list and I've been trying to shoot uh, and thought about how to actually shoot it, so I thought I'd shoot it at home. I can demonstrate it a little bit better. And the topic of this vlog is um, fishing different uh, colors of water. Uh, all depends on where you live. Some people may fish clear water, uh, lightly stained, tea colored, and then really stained water. Uh, and what baits and what colors you should use and what type of water and what color of water. So I've been asked this question numerous times. Um, I've been on clear lakes and people not having luck and they've asked why uh, my rod in the boat was bending so often and I've also been in tea colored water and had people ask the same question. So I thought I'd do a video uh, just helping you all along figuring this out. Uh, as you can see I've got four different colors of water here, just a clean glass of water, um, lightly stained, uh, even more stained and then as dark as I can get it uh, without going completely black. Um, Again, all depends on where you live um, and what waters you fish. But the key thing here is what bait are you supposed to use? What color would you use in, um, in this dark color here? What would be more pronounced and clear? Um, there are, there's a regular rule of thumb out there and then you can get outside of the box a little bit. Uh, mainly in clear colors of water, uh, you'll use bright baits like this one here, which is a pink and a white uh, little jig. Uh, I've got um, a chartreuse in a white with an orange chartreuse head. Again, bright, vibrant color. And I've got a third one rigged up here, which is a dark orange or a bright orange uh, with a chartreuse tail and a white jig head. Those colors are what you're going to want to use more in the clearer colors, which are these two here. Uh, it just it's going to stand out a little bit more. Sun will catch uh, those bright colors and the fish will be able to narrow in on the bait a lot easier. Uh, doesn't mean you can't use a darker color in here. Um, the rule of thumb typically is you can get away with using those vibrant uh, different colors, brighter colors in the clearer water. When you get into the stained over here, you're going to want to use darker colors of uh, baits or more natural color. And I'll hold one up here. This is a black and blue little grub with a black jig head. And I've got a couple of natural ones rigged up here. It's just a pumpkin seed little grub. And that there is a crayfish colored little grub. So those again are going to outperform brighter colors in the stained, uh, stained waters. I'm just going to try and do this slowly here. So if you're fishing clear water, which would be this one here, um, you're going to want to use mono or fluorocarbon line. And why I say that is if you're targeting smallmouth or pickerel uh, that can be very finicky and very investigative when they come up to a bait, um, you know, using a braid as an example, which I'll demonstrate in a few minutes here, uh, is it kind of deters the fish away because something doesn't look right, it doesn't look natural, uh, and they can see the line and all that other stuff. So you will want to use fluorocarbon line or mono in clear water. Um, in stained, you can get away with using uh, a green braid or a yellow braid or a red braid. Uh, fish will not be able to narrow in as much on the line. Um, they'll be more focused at looking at that that darker bait and trying to find the darker bait. So just to get this started here, I'm going to use this little chartreuse white grub. I'm going to try and get this move my camera in a little bit if I have to. Um, but this is just the bait in that in that clear water. Um, you know, it's it's not bad. You can barely see the line, um, but it, it's it's going to catch all the light and the reflection as you can see it very clearly in there. The second I move this over to a more stained one, now it's lost all that flash. You can still make it out, not so bad, but it's not as vibrant as it was in the clear water. I take this one step over to even darker, and now again. It's, you can see somewhat of a contrast of it. You can't really make the bait out. Now picture yourself, uh, you know, seeing a fish down there in a tank somewhere. Um, may not be able to decipher that as easily. I'm going to take it into the way stained water. And then there, again, it gets starts to get lost. Um, you know, you're getting contrast of that bait, but it's not as visible as it normally would be. So I'm just going to pull this one out. Get some of that stained stuff off there. I'll demonstrate that with another bright bait, but I'm going to use this one here that has 
braid tied to it. So this is the pink and white. Put this up in the clear. And as you can see, there's that line. You can distinguish that braid right away. The bait is the right color. The line is completely the, the wrong color. Um, again, the bait is perfect. It's catching the light that I've got over here to simulate uh, the sun. Uh, but the line, I mean, there's the line wiggling. You can see it very clearly. As I take this bait into a darker color, the line's not as visible. And again, the bait starts to slowly get lost. I'm going to go over every level here. So again, the line starts to blend in a little bit. The bait, you can kind of make out. It's not as great as a darker one will be, which I'll show you in a few minutes. And then when I take it over to this one, the line starts to really blend in and the bait again starts to get lost. Uh, that color starts to get lost. So it is critical when you're matching these baits um, to the actual water that you're fishing to do it correctly and try and, and, and master more of what's going to perform. So I'm going to bring now, I've got a bright color and a dark color. I'm going to take the dark color that's on the braid and use it in this. So this is that black and blue with the black jig head. I'm going to use it in this clear water here. So it's it's good. Like I said, it, there's you can you can actually get away with using some of the darker ones. Again, this is on braided line, so it's a no-no on the braided line. But you can actually get away with using that in clear water. Uh, should the fish be on a, a darker bait color bite, uh, it looks pretty good. Looks pretty pretty realistic. But the line again is sticking out like a sore thumb. So you're going to want to use mono or fluorocarbon there. As I get this into the first darker shade, you can see that bait is right there. You can see it a lot better. Uh, more and more visible for sure. I'm going to take it over the other level. Now again, the contrast and the shadow and the shading of that bait, you can see it. The line again is hidden, starting to get a little bit more hidden. And I'll take it to the last one over here. And in that really stained water, as you can see, that bait, very visible. So if the fish are swimming around out there, uh, they're going to be able to see this more than they will a, um, a brighter color. And what I'm going to do, because I have the orange and white tied here, I'm going to put these both side by side in here. So as you can see, there's the orange, you can barely make it out, and then there's a the dark one. So there is a very big difference on what fish are going to be able to distinguish. There they are right now. You can see the darker one a lot easier than you can the lighter one. Take them over to this tank here, this glass actually, not tank. And again, there's that darker bait swimming around in the orange. The tail is almost invisible. It's almost gone because it's blended in. Let's go back over to this one here. Both of them are not so bad uh, when it comes to the orange bait body, but you can clearly see the eye on the jig head and the darker jig head. Tail is more pronounced. The tail on the orange one is almost gone, even if I bring it towards the front. Um, it's pretty much almost lost. And then I'm going to take it over to the clear, which again, the rule of thumb is you can get away with those brighter colors, but you can see the orange sticks out like a sore thumb. Uh, the darker one's not bad, but the rule of thumb again is you're going to want to use that lighter, brighter color in clear water and more of those darker natural tones in stained water. Uh, and that is probably as best as I can describe it and show you on camera in three different colors. I've got... Um, those two little crayfish bait I told you, the pumpkin seed that I showed you earlier, and this natural craw, and I'll show these. These are on clear line, just mono. Natural color can work in clear water. There you go. It's fine. You can barely make out the line as well. And another natural color, which is just that crayfish one. Again, you can make it out in that clear water, uh, and, it, and it resembles and it works really well on the clear line. Natural tone again in the stained water. Take it over to the third one, that natural. Now all the highlights are coming out, all those little black lines on it start to come out. And then the really stained water, there's my camera there. Uh, you can start seeing it again. It just gets very pronounced. I'm going to take the, the other little natural color I had, which is the pumpkin seed. Again, in natural water color, looks fine. Somewhat stained, still pronounced. Even more stained. 
you start making out more of the darker tones so the little black specks in that pepper speck come out and then in the very stained water let me move my camera over slightly you can start making out all those dark pronounced little uh, parts of it so again the purpose of this video is to show you those differences I've been asked numerous times uh, in those clear shades of water like these two here you can get away with using those brighter colors and natural colors example here in uh, Ontario um, I fish black and blues for bass as a jig uh, with a trailer um, some clear water I'll just put it on mono or um, fluorocarbon line to uh, make it as invisible as possible but that darker tone I can get away with it so if I was to have a very overcast day uh, strictly as an example I'll see if I can replicate this a little bit by turning one of my lights off dimmed it down a little bit um, but say this is now an overcast day you can get away using those darker colors and again the rule of thumb leads you to do darker colors on overcast days um, do the contrast fish aren't going to really see colors are going to see shades and contrasts um, so you can get away with using let me grab this darker black and blue again in the clearer water you can get away with that one uh, again in the stained again there's an overcast day so I'm just going to replicate some of this here again that darker color is going to stand out in every single cup I put it in uh, the second I go to let me grab the chartreuse with white and put this in that clear water you can make it out still kind of blends in a little bit the tail starts to get lost um, let's go into the darker shade there it is you know it's still blending in quite a bit on that one this one here you start to almost get it almost in, you know non-visible and let's move it over to the dark one and you can barely see me shaking it around in there you make it out a little bit but not that much so again you're going to want to stick to those natural colors um, again using that little pumpkin one not so bad fish will be able to make that out go into this one you can still see it and there's a big difference you can still see it in this one it st stands out like a sore thumb even in that last one here you can still see that bait moving over there in that dark shade so wanting to shoot this video uh, I was giving it a lot of thought and I thought I'd do it this way just fill up uh, four glasses with uh, different shades of liquid in them to be able to show everyone out there that there are major differences um, on a very 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 sunny 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 day fishing clear colors here um, I'm just going to turn my light back on fishing the clear colors of water um, you can get away with those bright colors uh, you know pinks whites oranges yellow chartreuse bright blues bright greens uh, you can totally get away with it um, and when you get into those sunny days with stained water which would be more like these two uh, you're going to start losing those baits it's not going to be visible to the fish below and you probably will not have a, a very good fishing day out on the water you take an overcast day with more lighter shaded uh, water and you can use potentially a little bit of those bright colors I'd still go to more of those naturals in the darker shades like this here again a black or a blue or a dark green or something like that uh, dark brown those natural colors when the Sun goes away stick out like a sore thumb um, even in the darker pretty much through every shade here of water um, so again it's a little bit all over the map I experiment I have caught uh, as an example in tea colored uh, water um, I've caught on a chartreuse uh, spinner bait it was probably more than noise because I had a double Colorado blade on it which was making a lot of noise and the fish that day happened to be more onto the sound and not using um, sense of smell or uh, a visual on it it was more of a reactionary I was probably pulling the bait right by them it was making a ton of noise distracting them and they, they would swing out and strike at it uh, so you can experiment but again always follow the rule of thumb that's what I've grown up doing I do use a lot of those darker natural colors in um, the darker water and I'll use them in light water uh, when the fish are telling me that they are more into that bait instead of a bright bait the bright baits uh, always start using them on those sunny days in the clear water because it'll get a lot of reflection from the Sun uh, and a lot of glare and all that stuff 
uh, as you get into those sunny days with tea colored uh, water or darker any of these shades here uh, I'd avoid using those um those brighter colors unless the fish are telling you like I said if you have a chartreuse spinnerbait tied on uh, and it's a very noisy spinnerbait and you're casting it out even a white is an example and you're casting it out and the fish start hitting it but you're in stained water and it's a very bright day and you can't figure it out they could be getting that flash from the the blade uh, it could just be the noise uh, that's triggering them into striking so on that note um, hopefully you found the video helpful uh, like I said I've tried to demonstrate as best I can here with uh, these shades of water in the glasses uh, that seem to be the simplest way to demonstrate this um, so again, I hope you found the video helpful. Uh, should you have any questions, feel free to contact me through my website at uh, www.anfish.ca. Uh, for more of my videos, uh, I've got a lot of topics uh, that I cover on my videos. Uh, you can access my YouTube channel through my website as well. Uh, it's Anfish. And uh, again, I'll see you at my next video blogs. Um,